Hi, hello, welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is October the 1st, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. We're going up on a Tuesday. Um, I would definitely say today the vibes were, were much better. I wasn't like... Um, as mentally upset, but I mean, I feel like that's classic for me, part of the course. I know regular listeners are pretty well, pretty well aware of my mood swings and cycles from time to time. Uh, I will say though, I kind of had a little bit of this moment. I'm going to just instantly start blogging. I guess why not? Um, where like I had a moment where I was like, man, you know, you ever like have like a friendship or a thing where you want to like revisit that thing? Like, even though it ended poorly, like terribly, like Bridges burned, all that. Like, I just had that moment, and I'm like, Isaiah, don't do that. Don't do that. And I, and I wound up just posting about it on Facebook, and I also just I haven't really gotten to any messages or comments. So I appreciate people who have, like, hit me up and, you know, are saying, you know, things and checking on me. I really appreciate that, by the way. I think sometimes that is, like, the knee-jerk reaction why I do that because, like, I'm, you know, I sometimes kind of look around, reach around. I'm like, I really don't actually feel like I have anybody. But those things and those moments are reminders that I actually do, and it's really nice and refreshing and can really kind of help pull me out of some bad brinks, you know? So that that was a, a little bit sweet and sour. But overall, my day has been great. It's been a good day. Work was solid. Um, I didn't feel too frazzled, too pressed. No one was in my mix. I love that. I love that, dude. It was good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what was Food Corner last night? What did we eat last night? I made uh, a Mexican food bowl, you know, a little beef and rice with some bacon uh, turned out well, you know, pretty classico meal. I did switch up my tortillas. Uh, I went back to a like white corn tortilla. So essentially like, you know, they're a little bit thinner. So you double up on them. Uh, I, I will say, I don't think I'm ever going to try to even fry them. I don't think that would go well. I think they're too thin for it. Uh, but I did just like went ahead and just like pan fried them or put them in the skillet, I should say. Not really pan fried, whatever. You know what I mean? So, you know, got them all up and real nice. It was, it was a really yummy thing. I will say another thing I wanted to kind of mention, uh, I'm still grappling with issues with time. You know, I don't know. Once again, referencing my, my, my regulars, my real ones. Uh, I'm sure you're noticing if you're like catching this on the day of that it's, it's happening a little bit late. Maybe now you got to catch it like tomorrow. And I'm, I'm sorry. I am mea culpa. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to change with the times, you know, like I said, I got this gym ship, gym stuff, I should say, going on. So, you know, it just pushes down my clock a bit. And and hell, I, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to say that at least I am having some opportunities currently to talk to some friends and like I'm trying to like use that time because once again, I'm a guy who lives alone. So it's nice to like actually say, you know what, I'm going to sit and yap with my homie for today if they're going to talk to me today. You know what I mean? Like, why not? And then I feel like, damn, I'm, I'm ruining all my 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 endeavors, my, my dailies, you know, they're getting pushed. And also, once again, I, I've referenced this before, there's just not enough time in the day. Um... I will say I'm. I don't know if I'm finding the cheat code or I'm. I'm. I'm making some force edits or something. But like, I'm like, oh, what if we just push the bedtime back? You know, what if? What if we just go to bed later? And it's like Isaiah, you're already going to bed at midnight. Like that's already the goal. So what do you mean going to bed later? Your old ass can't take that. But I don't know. Here we are. We're, we're fighting. We're fighting the good fight. Uh, let's see here. Like I said, work was good. We 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 discussed that. Um. Let's go ahead and do the startup, and then we'll get into corrections corner, and then the rest of the news. How's that sound? I want to I want to gear up for it, my corrections because it's kind of a bit of of news, uh, somewhat of an update, if you will. Actually, before I get into the corrections, let me do my um, newsy shout-outs. Shout-out to Stephanie Renee. Shout-out to Edward Haas. Love y'all. Love all the newsies out there. Whether I named you, didn't name you, you're really, you're number one. You're big in my heart. 
I really I do it for y'all and I appreciate the you know the financial that you do for me that that is a, a sweet and kind support and also I just appreciate the, the 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 fellowship if you will you know what I mean I appreciate that y'all come through you know when you can and listen uh you know for the people that I do wind up hanging out and interacting with in like the real world the real life you know IRL if you will um, y'all my, y'all my family. I love y'all. Y'all really are cool to me. Like, I know I'm sounding like sappy or parasocial even, but like, these are people I know, you know what I mean? Like, I'm blessed with that, you know, even though I'm a small bean streamer or not streamer, content creator, podcaster, whatever. Like, I'm really blessed to at least have like people who really fuck with me and they've been doing it for so long. So hell yeah. And, 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 you know, like I said, this is for you. So anyway, I don't know. I don't want to get too mushy or too long winded there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I feel like I've been saying that a lot this week. Uh, but yeah, let me get to my corrections. Uh, Thursday, last Thursday had Jimbo on. We talked about Eric Adams. I mentioned a story about, uh, uh, Skidazins and a mysterious Twitch streamer from Turkey. No, Hassan was not involved. Uh, it, this was clickbait. This was fake news. Um, but I will say the real thing was the fact that he was indicted and that, you know, he was on the take. I, I gotta say allegedly here, slap that on there. But, <laughs> um, it's alleged that he took up to $100,000 in donations, which he was able to use with, like, New York's matching like plan where it's like oh if you're a citizen in New York you're running for uh, mayor um you can flip we'll match the donations like there's some kind of multiplier that they use to match them so essentially he racked up with these donations that were you know from Turkey like from Turkey you know Turkish citizens essentially banding with Turkish citizens in New York or whatever to kind of make these little straw donor things happen um he was able to um get like upwards of I think like 10 million um, in actual money for his campaign. So that alone. Then not to mention, apparently he had a thing for traveling. So he was using Turkish airlines to essentially get like free rides or like heavily discounted rides in like first class to travel where he wanted to go. You know, he was a man that really wanted to see the world. So, I mean, essentially he was doing that on Grift. Um, so yeah, I mean, just a bit of update there and corrections, mea culpa, you know, I knew I shouldn't have bit the story, but it was just too good. It's just like when I read or heard about J.D. Vance fucking a ghost. I wanted that story to be so real that he actually said that. Like, so much so that when the couch thing came out, I'm like, okay, yeah, but what about the ghost? <laughs> so, you know, as, 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 you know, as much as I try to be on it, y'all, I, I am a human being, I bleed, I'm a millennial, I make mistakes, you know, whatever. So, but even, like I said, I figure we add some more context on top of it. Why not? So, but let's go ahead and move on to um, some, you know, news from the Middle East, uh, from the Associated Press. Iran fires at least 180 missiles into Israel as region-wide conflict grows. Iran launched at least 180 missiles into Israel, excuse me, on Tuesday. The latest in a series of escalating attacks in a years-long conflict between Israel and Iran and its Arab allies that threatened to push the Middle East closer towards a uh, region-wide war. Um, let's see here. They kind of go a little bit of context. Um, from what I'm seeing, though, it doesn't look like the damage was um, too extensive. It didn't seem like there was like a big death toll. Um, sadly, I think... A Palestinian man was injured um, in the missile attack. I guess they, they were in Israel, and uh, they were like, um, like heavily injured, severely injured. Um, so that's obviously unfortunate. But um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where it was like, okay, it was making the headlines. I was like, oh shit, okay, I know what I'm going to be covering today. But then I even had like a friend, which I appreciate because y'all know I love to talking about news in general. Um, they're like, yo, this missile strike is happening. And I was like, oh shit. But I even like, I kind of like preface it. I'm like, yeah, but is the Iron Dome doing its thing and the Americans like helping out? Like, is this even like a thing? And he's like, dog, look at these videos. And so he sent me the videos and they, and the missiles were hitting. But the thing that was happening was, and we've talked about this when we're, we're, we're covering military conflicts and things of that nature. Yes, these missiles, you know, if we're talking about Ukraine and Russia, you know, it's missiles and drones and shit. But, like, yeah, these things get hit, 
or these things are like in the air and then you're seeing them hit the ground, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're hitting their intended targets. So in a lot of these situations, the Iron Dome did do its thing. American allies did help out, just like last time we've covered this kind of situation. And yeah, it was a crazy, spicy fireworks show. Very scary, very fucked up in its own, you know, macabre, you know, reality. But at the end of the day, it doesn't do anything. And now it's just going to be provocation for Israel to just do more fucked up shit. So, you know, the beat goes on. Um, also, like I mentioned in the episode prior, um, Israel has it begun its ground invasion. It's starting very similar to its invasion into Gaza, where they're like, oh, we're hitting the borders. You know, we're, we're kind of testing the edges. We're, we're doing some reconnaissance, blah, 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 a lot of that style of shit. But they're in, you know, they're, they're trying to play it down. But also it's like, but you are officially now invading there. And they say, oh, but we're not going to go to Beirut, which is the capital of Lebanon. Um, we're not. We're just trying to. We're just trying to create a buffer zone. And and they've been reiterating that this buffer zone is something that even the UN said that the Hezbollah should abide by, and they're not. So we're gonna step in and and do it ourselves. And it's like, okay, so you're just gonna do the war crimes. You know, you're just gonna do it. You're gonna occupy them, is what it sounds like, which is something they've done before. Um, you know, we've, once again, we've talked about that a little bit, but essentially. It seems like that is their plan, is to be in the southern part of Lebanon, create and keep somehow this buffer zone. I don't see how they're going to keep it once again without occupying Lebanon. And then then their northern settlers in Israel can move back into that area. That essentially is the play at hand. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, oh, I also want to add this. This is actually in the next article i was about to cover but it's literally right here so i'll just go ahead and just read it and we'll, we'll skip ahead um moments before iran launched its missiles a shooting attack in tel aviv left at least six people dead police said adding that the two suspects who had opened fire on the boulevard in the jaffa neighborhood had also been killed so yeah we're gonna kind of cover just kind of lump it in there together um Oh, yeah. Also, I'm reading this little blurb here. This is completely random aside. I'm sorry. Jimmy Carter is 100 years old, dude. That fucking living, breathing cadaver is just is in his own little hospice at home stasis. Just living it up, man. Um, oh, shit. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, let, let's actually go ahead and move on. I'm sorry. That was just a little blurb that came through on the AP ticker. Um, one second. Bear with me here. Trying to do some things on the fly. Um, hold on. There we go. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Doing a little bit of technical difficulties work here. I had to add on a thing I wanted to talk about in a second. All right. Um, next story is going to come from Reuters. Dock workers, U.S. Uh, U.S. dock worker strike halting half the nation's ocean ship shipping. Uh, U.S. East Coast and Gulf Coast dock workers began their first large-scale strike in nearly 50 years on Tuesday, halting the flow of about half the country's ocean shipping after negotiations for new labor, a new labor contract broke down over wages. The strike blocks everything from food to automobile shipments across dozens of ports from Maine to Texas. A disruption, uh, a disruption analyst warned, will cost the economy billions of dollars a day, threaten jobs, and potentially stoke inflation. Um, I love this because it, it, it does this thing, and I even saw this like from a post on Facebook, where you almost feel like the slant is like against the workers, against the union. Um, which is, I think, what is it, the International Longshoremen Association, the ILA. But essentially, it's, like, it's almost like you're putting it on them. Like, oh, this whole thing is going to jam up everything, and now you even might not get your, your get Christmas gifts, and da 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 And it's like, okay, but that shouldn't put the onus on the workers. It should put the onus on the people up top who are not giving people adequate wages living wages that they need to survive and not just survive actually live you know what i'm saying 
I think that's very fucking important. And in this situation, they are not getting that. So I, I just want to preface that as I, you know, kind of move forward here. And I'm, I'm sure I'm just probably going to wind up just quick skipping to the next thing at some point very shortly. But, you know, I, I just definitely wanted to emphasize that. I feel like that's an important thing when we're talking about these strikes that you realize that the people who are fighting this fight are fighting it just like you are. It's just the difference is they have a union that is saying, hey, as a conglomerate, as a whole, we are going to do this shit together. We have the means to make this work so that we can get what's what's rightfully ours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's important. And I think there's people who have lived their whole lives without a union and they just go, I don't get it. I just want my thing. I just want my stuff. I just don't want to be inconvenienced. And it's like, dog, nobody does. But at the end of the day, your the things that you need, the essentials, your human rights, these things should be fucking important to everybody, right? So I, I just, once again, want to emphasize that. But the International Longshoremen's Association, there you go, um, Association Union represents... Uh, 45,000 port workers, um, which had been negotiating with the United States Maritime Alliance or the USMX employer uh, for a group for uh, employer group for a new six year contract ahead of a midnight Monday deadline. So, yeah, I kind of heard about this and they're like, look, they aren't really coming like they're at the table or whatever, but we're not getting a deal we like. Like, this isn't it. So we are probably going to go on strike. So I wanted to wait until they actually did. So, you know, here we are. Uh, the ILA's, um, I just want to add this quote here, uh, um, adding that the offer fell far short of, uh, of the demands of its members to ratify a new contract. The ILA's leader, Harold Daggett, has said employers such as uh, container ship operator um, Maersk and its APM terminals North America uh, have not offered appropriate pay increases or agreed to demands to stop port automation projects that threaten jobs. So, I mean, I get that. Like, you don't want to see your shit replaced by AI or, you know, some outside entity that, you know, isn't, like, American. And it's it's one of those things where I've said before, I do hate the nationalistic streak that can kind of go through unions and... Uh, but I understand it because essentially what you are doing as a union is you're fighting for your people, you and yours. That is the core. That is the fucking focus. So I, I get it. But at the end of the day, you don't want to lose your job to some outside entity, period. I get that. And that's what these people are fighting for. They're fighting so that you, as a worker here, get your money, that you get your bread, that you aren't cut out of the fucking pie. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're here for it. We're happy to see it, um, at least in terms of them fighting the good fight. Um, I know that this is going to be one of those strikes that I don't know if it's going to play out like the UAW strike with like the car shit, you know, in terms of like them saying, hey, we can hit you kind of whenever and however we want uh, because we have the, the scope and the range to do that because we are a whole like, you know, we can go from Maine to Texas. You need us. You know what I mean? So if we decide to pop up and say, hey, we're striking here today, that's how it's going to be. Um, let's see. I guess I, I should read a little bit more details here. I'm sorry. Uh, we are prepared to fight as long as necessary to stay out on strike for whatever period of time it takes to get the wages and protections against uh, automation uh, our ILA members deserve, Daggett said on uh, Tuesday. The USMX said in a statement, our current offer of nearly 50% wage increase exceeds every other recent union settlement. While addressing inflation and recognizing the ILA's hard work to keep the global economy running. Daggett said the union is pushing for more, including $5 per hour raise uh, for each year for uh, the new six-year contract. So I really hope to see them make some gains here. Uh, I'll definitely try to keep you posted. I know I'm definitely cutting this short a bit. I have a lot on the docket. Once again, I still feel bad. I'm trying to just cram in all this news. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and hit the next beat. Uh, it comes from the Latin Times. Uh, and this is a this is a crazy story. It just kind of popped up, but I, I will say I had heard it on my um, my uh, my feed in BBC, like listening to the world news or whatever. I had heard it, and it kind of lashed into my brain, and then I saw it again on my phone, and I was like, I want to talk about this. Um, so this is from yeah, Latin Times. Uh, McDonald's went years without noticing employees were human trafficking victims. Report finds can undo the damage to my mental health. A new report has revealed that several employees of McDonald's in the United Kingdom were trafficked and the fast food giant missed obvious warning signs. 
a BBC investigation revealed that 16 victims were trafficked from the Czech Republic and forced to work for years at a McDonald's and a bakery in the UK, despite obvious red flags. From 2015 to 2019, a Czech Republic gang led by brothers Ernest and Zednik Dravinak targeted vulnerable individuals, primarily the homeless and those battling addiction. They promised their victims well-paid jobs in the UK, but instead siphoned off most of their earnings from work at the fast food giant and a factory that supplied bread products to uh, major grocery chains. So that definitely makes sense because like, when I initially think of bakery, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe like some mom and poppy situation. But it's like, no, 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 no. This was a big scale thing. So essentially it's like, yeah, we're throwing people into the mix here, but we have full control over these people. They can't leave. They can't run away. Like they are working prisoners for us and they give us their paycheck. And so essentially these people were working for like pounds. Um, yeah, one victim, uh, one of the victims, Pavel, said he was only given a few pounds per day, even though he constantly worked excessive hours at McDonald's. Pavel said the victims were afraid and worried about being discovered if they attempted to escape. So, uh, and then this is the quote from the uh, headline. You cannot do the damage to my mental health, Pavel told the BBC. It will always live with me. Uh, this case of human trafficking went unnoticed for four years, despite numerous blatant indicators. These included wor uh, victims working 70 to 100 hours per week, nonstop shifts, wages deposited into other people's bank accounts, multiple people registering at the same home addresses, and gang members sitting in on job interviews. Like, reading that out loud makes it seem even crazier to me. But essentially, once again, I have to add that this is a McDonald's. This is a big bakery chain. So essentially, they're like, okay, it's a little weird. You got your friend here, but, like, you're going to show up, right? Like, like, have you ever been in a McDonald's interview? I, I, that's something I, I've actually had the, uh, the boon of doing. I actually went through the interview, and it was, like, so uncanny because I think it was maybe my second – Maybe my, no first or second job interview I've ever done was at a was at a McDonald's, and I remember the manager you know set aside with me you know did the interview, you know obviously she's in the middle of working, um but it was just like just the most like basic things like hey you're gonna sh you would show up right like you'd show up on time right like you'd do your best if you, you you came here and it's like. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. And like, okay, well, you, you got the job, you know, just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just call us, call you, we'll, we'll work it all out. And I remember I told my dad this, and it was almost like he let me do it just so I could have the process of it. And he was like, hey, Isaiah, I'll give you more money for chores. Does that sound good? If you don't work. Like, I was like, huh? <laughs> but he would just, I think my dad had really realized that he was like proud of me for like trying to go to this effort to make more money. I was like a teenager at the time or whatever. But he was just like, I don't want you to go to this soul crushing ass job where they don't give a flying shit about you. I'll just give you a little bit more money. You already earned it by putting it up on the line. So that's my little anecdotal bullshit story. But these people risked everything to try to get a better life for themselves and essentially got duped into doing this shit for fucking pounds for just nothing for nothing they worked to the bone through the bone for that shit 70 to 100 hours per week at a mcdonald's marines couldn't even do that shit bro fuck man so just super upsetting super stressful um i definitely didn't see that shit coming on my feed when um i heard it and i was like all right you know let me go ahead and try to cover that today um Let's see here. Was there anything else I really wanted to pull? No, uh, that's, that's more or less it. Uh, yeah, the abuse came to light in October of 2019 after victims contacted uh, Chess Police, prompting an investigation in the UK. Six game members were arrested and convicted in two separate trials. So there we go. They say that, you know, uh, McDonald's uh, UK stated that it is enhancing its systems to identify potential, potential risks. Uh, the British Retail Consortium has also committed to learning from the case and improving its measures to prevent similar incidents of modern human trafficking. I, I mean, I fucking hope so, man, because that shit's fucked to fuck. Fuck the, fuck the shit, man. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let me... Um, we're going to maybe take one, maybe two breaks. You know what? I'm, I'm going to really stretch my legs maybe on this. Uh, and I know I said yesterday I hate going obituary mode, but like... Man, it is the fall. 
Like, I, and apparently it's time. The Reaper has called. You know what I mean? So I, I wanted to kind of just do this in one fell swoop and, you know, we'll, 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 cover, we'll cover the gone. We'll cover the lost. Uh, but yeah, let's take our last break. Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> this one is from the Associated Press. I, uh, actress Maggie Smith, known for Harry Potter and Downton, Downton Abbey, has died. Um, so, uh, yeah, Maggie Smith, the masterful scene-stealing actor who won an Oscar for the prime of miss jean brody in 1969 nice and gained new fans in the 21st century as dowager countess uh grantham in downton abbey and professor minerva 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 uh minerva mcgonagall in the harry potter films uh died friday she was 89 so that was last friday um didn't cover it me culpa me bad um but yeah you know kind of just fell into the um the weave there and i missed it a bit um also i know we've talked about harry potter before i know harry potter is a bit of a controversial thing these days because uh the old jk rowling the moldy old transpho <laughs> god damn dude she really wrecked her own shit bro like all you had to do was just like stop this beef that you have with with people who want to just live their lives like you could just shut the fuck up about it and like i don't know internalize that shit like a, a real oldie but they're like nah she's like i'm gonna tweet about it and i'm gonna keep tweeting about it and i'm gonna like hate the people that literally made this shit because like you know ugh, I, I'm, I'm in the weeds it, this isn't about any of this shit it's not about um miss smith r.i.p to her she's a legend love her um you know, I, I literally, and this is once again, you know, I gotta talk my shit. Um, I remember watching Harry Potter and I remember I read, I read up until what the fifth book. And I was like, this is kind of trash. Um, but, um, I remember being like, man, okay. I get the layout of Hogwarts. I'm feeling the vibe. I get it. The wizardry. I'm sure this is going to get crazy at some point. It really didn't until like, when fucking way, way, way late, way late. Uh, but I remember being like, all right, I'm digging the vibe. I'm digging the kid wizards. I would love to be in wizard school. That's so cool. And like, I remember McGonagall being like right out of the book. Like she was one of the characters that definitely was like, oh, this is ratio one to one. I love this. Like this is exactly the same. And I, I, I just, I loved her portrayal of uh, Professor McGonagall. So there's that. There's my uh, my flowers to her. Sorry, I, I muddled it in a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Talking about J.K. fucking Rowling. Uh, but anyway, uh, another uh, death I missed uh, because y'all know I'm just not that country. But I did learn something um, from USA Today. Chris Christopherson, cool last name, uh, legendary singer, songwriter, turned Hollywood leading man, dies at 88. It is with a heavy heart that we share the news our husband, father, grandfather, Chris Christopherson, passed away peacefully on Saturday, September 28th, at home. Excuse me. The uh, Christopherson family said in a statement, We're also blessed for our time with him. Thank you for loving him all these many years. And when you see a rainbow, know he's smiling down um, at us all. Um, now I've seen a lot of cool shit out of him. Um, he's done a lot of cool covers that I didn't know about. And I was like, hell yeah, that's dope. Also, people have covered his music and like the way he responded to like Janis Joplin recover, like, re like doing a cover of his song. He's like, I walked around listening to it all day and I just cried. And I was like, that's so heartfelt. Um, also he had amazing colorful things to say about Palestinians in a great way. And just like more or less just in, in his time in that moment, it's not in this article, but I just remember seeing it where 
you know, he was just like, just understanding it's like, hey, these people are going through a plight. We should all like understand and feel that as as well. I'm butchering that in the paraphrase, but I was like, damn, I fuck with that. Also, I think there was like a moment where like, uh, I'm getting her name wrong in terms of saying it, but another person who's passed away, uh, Sonata O'Connor, um, like she had, like was doing a performance. It was like super fucking heartfelt. And like, you know, he was like there, like, you know, like had her back and shit being very supportive. So overall, this guy seemed super fucking cool. I kind of initially, when I heard about it, I was like, oh, country singer, I don't know. But back to what I learned, he apparently him and Barbara Streisand were in the first A Star Is Born. God damn, I didn't know that, y'all. I didn't know. I'm a dummy. I'm a fucking dummy, dude. Like I'm the guy you get and you like you 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 slap a remake with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. I'm gonna go shit. Like this movie is crazy. This movie is so like who came up with this? This is so fr- like wow wow. There's crazy shit. That was a, apparently, that was a remake, you know, that was a, like, I didn't know that shit. Um, Needless to say, uh, in terms of that story, it's very fucking emotional. I cried. I almost couldn't finish that shit. Um, Goddamn, watch A Star Is Born. And I need to go watch the, apparently, the original, the Oh Goddamn G. Because, like I said, this was an amazing movie, and him and Barbara Streisand were in it. So there you go. If you didn't know that, now you know that. Obviously, I didn't. I didn't explain that well, but whatever. Um, moving on, we got we got a, a few more actually to do. That's another thing. Like I said, I had to add a thing. I, man, the Grim Reaper is just sprinting right now. Um, from USA Today, Ken Page, voice of Oogie Boogie in The Nightmare Before Christmas, dies at seventy. Man, Oogie Boogie was the dude, bro. He was so spooky. And I was always so scared about what was in his insides. Like, oh my God, it's like guts, like gross, rotten food or candy. I don't know. He was on some creepy shit. He was a good villain. Um, Kim Page, the stage actor known for uh, starring in shows like Cats, Angelical Cats, um, and for lending his voice to the classic animated film, The Nightmare Before Christmas, has died. He was 79. Um, a representative for Page confirmed to USA Today on Tuesday that the actor passed away very peacefully at his home in St. Louis. So St. Louis, man. Okay. Hell yeah. Man from the city. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see here. There's more here. Obviously, I'm not doing him justice. Uh, it's for the sake of time. Please forgive me, Mia culpa. Um, then move on to John Amos, um, from NPR. John Amos. All right. Got a thing in my way. Um, star of TV's Good Times and Roots, dies at 84. John Amos, who starred as the family patriarch on the hit 1970s sitcom Good Times and earned an Emmy nomination for his role in the seminal 1977 miniseries Roots, has died. He was 84. Um, Amos's publicist, Belinda Foster, confirmed the news of his death Tuesday, no other details were immediately available. Uh, he played James Evans Sr. on Good Times, which featured one of television's first black two-parent families, produced by Norman Lear and co-created by actor Mike Evans, who co-starred on On the Family. The Jeffersons ran it from 1974 to uh, 1979 on CBS. So, I mean, I'm obviously just shrinking this down, um, but... His roles in Good Times and Roots were just milestone type roles. And especially, I feel like in Good Times, how he fought for the actual character dynamic of being like, I don't want us to be looked at like and i mean us as like a people as black people we shouldn't be bastardized or like treated as like a caricature of ourselves or like be some kind of like jokey character thing like being very self-aware about who his character was and what that meant in the time in the world like what that perception is it just that's very important and to fight and not just not just to see it and understand it but like really fight for that is something that really just that's moving to me um, you know, especially in a time, cause I, I, I think about myself, w- would I be able to do that or I would just get along to get along? You know what I mean? Like this is a potential role of a lifetime. I, I have a, a chance to really like up my profile here. If I just keep this going, I got a gravy train right now, but instead to be like, it's more than that. And to actually fight for that, 
you know what I mean? And so that led to creative differences. He winds up having to get, like, killed off of his own show. He also had an importance, too, about saying that, like, it wasn't just about me, and I felt like I was a little bit too much of the focus, and it should have been more of an ensemble of, like, all the cast on Good Times. Um, and then there's Roots, which is just very iconic role. He plays, like, the uh, adult Kunta Kinte. That's, that's moving. That's intense. Big role. Um... So yeah, I mean, that was supposed to be my last death, but then I remembered, oh shit, once again, looking at the ticker, I wasn't a big American Pickers fan, but uh, Frank Frank Fritz uh, of reality TV show American Pickers dies at 60. Uh, Let me actually cue up the full article here, Um, see if I can pull any more real quick for you. Actually, while this is loading, I'm going to take another, I'm going to take a bonus break. Okay. Let me read a little bit here now that it loaded. Uh, Frank Fritz, part of a two-man team who drove around the U.S. looking for antiques and collectibles to buy and resell on reality sh- on the reality show American Pickers, has died. He died Monday night at a hospice facility in Davenport, Iowa, said Arnett Oberlander, a longtime friend. She said he was 60, uh, not 58, as some websites and news sources said. Um, she was. Uh, she said she was by his bedside, as was Mike Wolf, who starred with Fritz uh, for more than a decade on the History Channel program. Man, all this is about to make me really sad. Um, but damn, like that's sixty. That that like I said, that that's that's right on the cusp for even me to be like that's young. That's crazy, man. Um, so yeah, that that's that's a real bummer. Especially like I, I I'm on the level with you. I didn't watch American Pickers. It, you know, it really didn't move me. But it's a show I can understand. I used to watch Storage Wars. I was a Storage Wars enjoyer. So I get it. I, I love a good wheeling and dealing and a hustle and you know like it kind of gave American Road Show vibes. Can I say that? Is that bold? Is that too bold to say? Too brazy? Too brave? Um, but um. You know, good good shit all the all the same. Um, you know, obviously a very sad loss. Condolences uh, to um, you know him and you know his friends and you know just loved ones and shit. Man, that's that's those all hit. But damn, I don't know why that one. Especially, I, I guess because I can I can picture that one. You know that that, that just kind of ooh made me where I live. Uh, damn, how did I go longer? That was literally like one less story. <laughs> Okay, hopefully this is a good, uh, hey, sorry for taking the day off, but I gave you two big episodes, so there you go. You know, you got you got a lot of drag time with me, just hanging out, and me saying sorry a lot, which is very, very, very Isaiah-coded. I, I do have that issue, where I like to apologize a lot. Um, I will say, though, I, I should probably skedaddle. There's a whole debate going on as I'm recording right now between, uh, what is it, Tim Walls and uh, J.D. Vance. They're going out. I literally watched like the first like five minutes of it as I was like uh, doing some research, and I was like, Isaiah, you gotta turn this off, brother. You gotta you gotta lock in because if you don't, you're gonna be watching this and you know not eating and doing anything. You know what I mean? And like I said, these these days are getting longer. But yeah, that that's it. Um, if you'd like to help out, become a newsie today. Uh, Patreon.com slash Isaiah News. Uh, let's see here. Free ways to hit me up, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Feel free to follow me or the podcast on any of the socials you're on. Uh, you know, hey, like I said, I'm a yapper. You can find me, um, you know, either way. Anyway, uh, let's see. Hit the uh, subscribe button on the YouTube. That's a free way to help out. Um, and then leave a like. Leave a nice comment. Sharing is caring. Um, I mean, if you really want to chop it up, please don't be mean. That'd be crazy to be mean. You know, you know my emotional state. Why would you? Uh, how could you? But I mean, you know, there's ways to hit me up. Like I said, I I keep debating if I want to try to dust off the discord again. It's it's there. I haven't like terminated it or anything. It's just, this is never active, (laughs) but whatever, you know, it's out there. You know, you can find me anyway. Uh, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.